Hello, my name is Tom Cochran and I teach at the MIT Sloan School of Management. And we're talking today with Professor Richard Locke, who just completed a very interesting book called The Promise and Limits of Private Power, Promoting Labor Standards in a Global Economy. And it looks at the role of codes of conduct of major corporations and the capacity needed to manage workplace conflicts. So Rick, uh, we're very interested in helping the Chinese management community to improve its ability to address these issues. What are the main lessons from your book for managers of Chinese workplaces? I think the main lessons for Chinese managers are threefold. Uh, the first one is that the traditional approach to compliance, which is basically audits, codes of conduct, remediation plans, those in and of themselves don't work. It's not like they don't do anything. It's important to collect information and to track it. But uh, just collecting the information on a periodic basis doesn't really bring about change. What we discovered was that to really bring about change, you need to enhance the capabilities of the managers themselves. And by capabilities, I mean uh, learning how to manage people in a modern way, learning how to organize work uh, in a modern way, learning how to organize production, inventory management, uh, uh, supply chain management, et cetera, in a modern way. That that's essential to run an efficient, but also a more ethical workplace. The last lesson that we learned was that the private sector, even well-intentioned and well-developed managers, can't tackle these problems in and of themselves. One needs to build public institutions or public and private partnerships um, for mediation, uh, for arbitration, for dispute resolution, et cetera, which are important. You can't solve those kinds of rights issues one factory at a time. You really need to have the institutional infrastructure to support it. Good. And as you know, we're working with educators in China, and so it would be really helpful to know what you see uh, ways of integrating these lessons into business school and other school curricula in China. Should we be using specialized human resource and labor relations courses? Should we be integrated into other core curricula or other ways? Yeah, I, I think the best way to educate uh, future managers on these issues in China, but elsewhere as well, is not either or, but to do both. I think that there is uh, no substitute for a really good uh, strategic human resource management uh, class. One that really explains the theory, the different kinds of practices, the history and the evolution, and how these work um, across different uh, sectors. There's now a lot of work that's been done at MIT and elsewhere on this, and I think that that work can really inform all managers. But what one wants to do is integrate those lessons with other core functions. And so when I think of, for example, courses in operations management or supply chain management uh, or even marketing, one uh, would want to integrate these issues around how do you manage people in an efficient and ethical way, how do you manage production in a more efficient and ethical way, and linking those to our more traditional disciplines, operations management, marketing, accounting, even finance, let alone strategy, I think is also a nice complement to the core HR course. And you mentioned a minute ago uh, the need for mediation and other uh, institutions. Do you have some suggestions for how we might build those institutions in a country like China, knowing uh, what you know from looking at experiences in the U.S. and other countries around the world? I think that the way to try to begin to build those institutions in China are to first look at what already exists in place in China and see what one can build uh, from that. That was experienced in the United States where we've always, all of our institutional reforms, significant institutional reforms, have always begun by looking at local experiments, local experiences, and then diffusing those. I think in China, from what I understand of China, having spent a fair amount of time visiting factories uh, in China, is that um, the same thing exists there. So for example, in many workplaces in China, we already have health and safety committees. Can those health and safety committees play the same type of role that some of our health and safety committees played when individual states devolved certain kinds of functions to more autonomous health and safety committees, ones that were truly representative of the workers and not just dominated by management, and how they didn't just uh, execute more efficiently health and safety standards, but they also provided voice to workers. So I would like, I think one way is to look at what already exists 
within the factories that might, we might be able to sort of develop and uh, elaborate on. And likewise, outside of the factory, there's all sorts of very interesting local level institutions, some more developed in some towns than in others or in some provinces than others. And I would uh, suggest that one would begin to work with, for example, professional associations, local business associations, uh, other kinds of civic groups that exist, and lots of different civic groups exist across China, to say, can they play, uh, or at least begin to play, the kind of functional equivalent to the kinds of professional mediation, arbitration uh, associations that we have in this country. Good. And finally, if you were to just provide uh, your own personal and professional advice to the next generation of Chinese managers and leaders to prepare them uh, to address the challenges that you know they are facing, what uh, advice would you have? Um, I think the number one challenge that I've seen in China, uh, having spent a lot of time visiting factories and as deputy dean visiting quite a number of uh, uh, business schools uh, in uh, China is that um, they need to get beyond just paying attention to the core functions. Uh, you know, learning accounting and finance and strategy and operations, I think that they have excellent curriculum and uh, they, they should keep on doing what they're doing. But to really make a significant change, they need to invest seriously in the study of people and organizations how effective we are around strategy, around supply chain management, around operations, uh, is completely dependent on how well we manage the people in these organizations and how we manage organizational processes. And it seems to me that that particular set of skills is a set of skills that, at least in my visits to China, are the ones that they could really invest in and would have the biggest bang for the buck. That's great. Thank you very much. Thank you.